I think back to some of my favorite fish memories, there are lots that come to mind. But one thing that stands out in many of these is my first boat, the white boat. My first big purchase as a young adult who wanted nothing more than to fish every single day. This boat was more than just a boat to me, it was an escape. Either from a long day of work and construction or an excuse to get out of town, every weekend it was a new lake, a new state, and a new adventure. Back then, the species didn't matter. The memories did. Some adventures with friends, but many were on my own. Looking back, I realize now just how much I learned in that boat. Little did I know back then that these documented memories would change my life forever. The Week on the Woods series, the first muskie catch on drone, would all be stepping stones towards fulfilling my lifelong dream of one day making it in the industry. After three seasons and countless miles together, our journey would come to an end. The day I sold the boat, I watched it go down the road and a piece of me went with it. Three years later, our paths would cross again when I got the opportunity to own the boat. Our mission is simple, to restore the white boat and keep the nostalgia of this boat alive. All right guys, welcome to episode four. This is gonna be the full boat reveal. If you guys came to Minnesota Muskie Expo, you already got to see this, but we're here with Nate, the owner of Aftec, the guy who made all this stuff happen, not only in the white boat, also in my two lungs the last two years. And I just saw this thing for the first time. Nate had sent me pictures a month ago, a month and a half ago, and pictures never do these floors justice. That's the one thing I, I will say. Like, you can see it, it looks cool, but until you see it in person, this project was on a whole other level. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by how it turned out, and we're gonna show you guys that right now. Full Aftec Aqua Traction floor, first ever 205 Triton. Yep. 2001, guys, we took this boat from a 2001 to the latest and greatest flooring that's out there and basically gave this boat a facelift. Now, I think a lot of people are gonna be in this situation where prices of boats right now are absolutely insane. People are probably gonna want to revamp their boat to a point, but they don't wanna spend 100 grand to get into a new one. And this is an option that you guys can get into and bring a facelift to a boat like this and it's actually affordable versus going and getting a loan and selling your soul. Absolutely. Per se, like what I've got to do with my big boat to run a business, right? Yep. A lot of people, this is a great boat. Um, this boat I plan on keeping forever. Jesse's going to guide out of this boat. Um, and it's just a super cool platform overall. So we're going to go through kind of a lot of things Nate did that made this such a custom build um, and something that you guys can do with a boat of your own if you want to get a hold of a man with the legend himself, Mr. Nate. Knock this thing out of the park. I am absolutely blown away. Um, I don't even know where to start. There's like so much here. I guess you just want to start in front? Yeah. Work our way back? Well, very cool. So come on up here, guys. We're going to start at the very bow of the boat. Um, first thing, I guess, we stripped off everything off of this boat. We took off the uh, tracks, took off the joint motor plate. Um, what else? I mean, we took off more stuff than I did. Yeah. We got rid of a console. Yeah. We, I think we totally I, got rid of a console. First thing was the console that came out. That was, yeah struggle but it did come out. Coming up to the front here, we cut this out behind this, mm. made it bigger, and then we cut an HDPE plate behind it, fastened it with stainless steel screws. And then yeah, because that was this big. Yeah. So that front cover initially was maybe five by five, five by six. It was, tiny. it was small. And if you've ever tried to work on anything or there's gonna be a neutral motor that goes on here with any kind of bracket, that small hole is just so hard to work in and there's no reason it couldn't be bigger. So I just said Nate, like, as long as you're up there and you're cutting the holes in my boat, yeah. cut the biggest one you possibly can to replace it. It was an old wooded, crappy looking piece of plastic that was delaminating and just looked gross. Yep. Whereas now, new HTP, stainless steel screws, no rusting. The other screws were rusted in there, just yep. gnarly looking, right? But just gave it a whole fresh look and there's more access to get up in there to work on any, any wires, any showing motor stuff. But just a bigger port of entry to work on anything, which is huge. Yep. Um, when it comes to boats, you're always so constrained. Everything's reaching and twisted and, and scratchy like fiberglass, right? Yep. I'm sure you scratch at night. Every night. <laughs> um, but then coming back, we did all new lids. So this is what Nate really specializes, is making custom lids. Now, all of these, you never had any prior molds of. This is the first boat you did with this. Correct. Yep. So, yeah, so what I had to do is I gutted all the carpet out of it. I digitally scanned all of the wells, both the uh, exterior, the wells itself, and then the hole or the flange around it. Um, from there, brought in the cab, I made molds, made made molds, made hatches, and then installed it in the boat. He makes it sound like it's such a short process, but from start to finish, this was how long of a time period for you? Off and on, it was 
probably month, month to month and a half. Yeah. I, I worked on it when I had the chance to. Right. And we had, I dropped this thing off this last fall, which is key, because your busy season is basically January until July? Yeah, July for sure. Um, yeah, it was like this year was October to, to July. So I, I didn't help her bring it. You know, no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, if you can get your boat here in some kind of off season, the more popular it is getting more people that want a custom floor like this. Um, but getting in in your, in your time frame, your schedule, earlier the better. Everything, the, the shop right now is packed. You're working your tail off seven yep. days a week. This kid was up till three in the morning working on my floor for my other boat just a couple weeks ago. Like, yeah. One thing I love about Nate is he's such a hardworking guy, and I think we relate to that in a lot of sense. Yeah. The difference is I get to go fishing for 20 hours straight, and Nate's on his hands and knees or on his computer working on boats for 20 hours straight, which is the difference. But we're going to do some fishing this summer. Absolutely. we got it planned out. Nate's going to come on a pool with musky adventure. But yep. this thing, I, I'm blown away with all the work and energy put into this. But these new lids, super solid. The carpet on top of these old ones was already tearing off, ripping, peeling apart. It, it looked really, really like trash. And the lids themselves are actually getting pretty soft, uh, especially this big, large part on here. This one's getting that one was bad. Pretty soft, and it's such a unique design on that one as well. Like the mold for that, you saw the picture that was just crazy, or something that you don't see a lot out of pens, right? Yep. It was a pain in the ass, <laughs> <laughs> but it's done, right? Yep. And this thing is super soft. Like the only thing that is bouncing is the trailer, and we have to get a new trailer for this boat as well. That's that's coming here in a couple weeks, but super solid. The Crocs stomp. I don't have my Crocs on today, but. Follow Nate on Instagram. The Crocs style is a thing. All these lids are super solid, way better than what they were. Again, this boat is a 2001, so at 23 years old, mm -hmm. and brought this thing totally back to life. But like the one part that I think was really cool is Nate did take out the side console, and the one thing I wanted him to do was there was a where this console was. There's a big pocket here that would have like trash or whatnot in it, and. It was basically just like a, a falling hazard, hazard or tripping hazard. Yeah. So Nate built this up, actually made a small little, you could almost call it a casting deck, um, but a custom piece in here, HDP, so that it just gave this person a little bit more extra room. So now you can fish two people up here even more comfortably than before, um, or you can comfortably stand right here and not have to worry about falling off, or you can even stand back you know, as far as you'd like. But that little eight, 10 inches went a long way as I think all this boat it just added so much more space yeah, and now you're tearing out the consoles come and we fish two people way like super like there's more room in the bow of this boat than my 22 foot lawn yeah right i think personally and that the, my 22 foot lawn has arguably the biggest front deck in like the 22 foot fiberglass boat yeah and this thing is just massive but by tearing that out you do you know you're going to suffer a little more from the elements but like we talked about before this like the bubbles really don't do a whole lot as far as protection uh, really no and in my opinion, just buy a good rain suit, you put your pro dry on, spin backwards, and, and take it that way instead of uh, you know, looking or ducking under a windshield, any of that stuff. But wide open, and this is going to fit in perfectly just for the style of fishing that I do. I'm always musky fishing, while I fish whatever I do, but I always fish off the left side of the boat. So having this completely open is going to be so nice. There's no more smacking rods. If you're ripping rubber, I would always hit like my windshield on my big lung. I'm always hitting my rod into that windshield here or in this boat would have been the bubble, but just wide freaking open. Absolutely love it. Yep. So cool. And I haven't opened this compartment for probably four years since I owned the boat before I sold it. That bottom one was like locked tight, like yep. seized. There was no opening that thing up. Yeah, we had to pry it open. <laughs> it was bad. But yeah, we pried it open and then replaced it with the new one there. Yeah, and it's just a small little, it's basically, they call it a cooler back in 2001. It's just a plastic tub, um, but just more storage, which is huge in a boat like this. But just blown away with, with all this. And then the cab, the design, I have to give Jessie credit for the design. She basically took that over. Um, the diamond pattern is super cool. And then she wanted to break up the design with this solid black line on either side, yep. which looked really, really good. And the blue arc traction wave, love a little hint of blue. Yeah, we got that up in the bow, the Thorn Brothers on the side, Thorn Bros on the rod locker for all our customs, and it just, this part of the boat just turned out amazing. All the protection here on the gunnels, we covered up my expensive fiberglass work that I wasted 2500 bucks on. Yep. Um, never do that, never do that. Just <laughs> put aqua traction over the holes and be done with it. Don't pay someone to fix the holes and then cover it. Yep. Stupid, live and learn, okay? Um, but yeah, like diamond up here, solid black, and then contour on the bottom of the boat looks super good. We got the Aftec logo down there. 
and then covered up our just in case box in the back. And we're actually gonna flip sides here out and show you the uh, adventure Nate got to go on in the back there. Yep. All right, so back of the boat, um, first thing you're gonna see, big giant just in case box. This box has been in this boat since I bought it in 2015. Um, Bob Bill builds a super awesome product, but the last few years I've put the Aqua Traction, all, I guess all three years now, I've put Aqua Traction over my just in case boxes. These are just gonna be for musky bait tackle storage. There's obviously just uh, Al Jesse's crap in here that he didn't take out before uh, we got into this last season, but I love having those just in case boxes. It just adds a whole another deck element to this boat, but then the Aqua Traction over top of it's super nice. We got Nate's logo here. We got Jesse's marketing company here. And then the Dakota Lithium here, of course, on the back where all our Dakota Lithium batteries are. But the coolest part of this, or the biggest adventure Nate had, is what he's standing on. And we actually filled in this whole splash wall in the back. This was a huge part of the dead space in the boat. Um, there was a 16, 14, 16 inch yep. wide, basically splash wall back here that was just dead space. We couldn't do anything with it. You couldn't stand in it. It's right at the water level. It was always getting wet. And I asked Nate, like, is there a possibility or is there a way to extend the deck back to that so that it's not just dead wasted space and you have more, you're feeling like if you don't step off of this ledge, you're just gonna fall into the lake. Yep. And uh, he scratched his head for a little bit, but we came up with this and it's built incredibly well, I will, I will say. And what, the whole, like walk me through the process on that. Yeah, so what I did here, uh, while everything was gutted, um, I took the, the digital scanner and I mm -hmm. scanned everything in 3D. Um, from there, it was quite a few hours in CAD, but I was able to extract from it the, the top, as you can see here. Yep. And then I put in all of the, the latchet or the hatches. Um, so this is three quarter inch HDPE um, along the supports there, and then a half inch hatch. So I created a flange on the three quarter inch boards, inch and a half wide. So then the half inch board has something to rest on. Yep. So it's always strong. Um, I added in supports on the back, the front, the sides, and then down the middle um, periodically there. Yeah, and then put the hatches in. So like, it was, it was some one thing just to put the deck here, but we also needed access to all this stuff. You've got all your cables running here for your big engine. Yep. Um, obviously our fuel lines and whatnot for our kicker here as well. But all these open up, they're hinged, and we can still access, you know, if you need to pump the fuel ball or any of that stuff, you can access all these ports. You can open up that one under your feet too. Um, all three of these, you can access all of it. It's all hinged, um, looks super nice. If you need to get in there, you can, but it's still adding that whole deck element to it and just it made the boat that much bigger yep. overall. And a nice part about this too is you have your additional storage. You can put your straps in there, you can put your plugs in there. Yeah, um, right. And everything is sealed, it's it's there to stay. Absolutely, yeah. The only, both the sides are totally sealed. This middle one is the only one you wouldn't want to put anything in. Um, just due to the back access to the jack plate, but you had to cut that out just so the jack plate can move up and down. I know your original plate was all the way across, needed a little bit of modifying, Nate made it work. And being an engineer kind of helps a little bit. So this guy isn't just the dude that gets greasy in the garage. And he is very educated, way smarter than I am, and made this whole project turn out absolutely insane. Um, this, we didn't talk about this before. Yeah. So this compartment over here was a standard live well, um, and there was actually two compartments. It was a live well, and then the side there was like a square, and you could put like an old school bait bucket in there. Well, all it was is this one over here we'd kind of use just for dry storage. I'd throw a plug in it, but this one really wasn't big enough to do so. So I told Nate, "Can we? Is there a possibility we can just make this one lid instead of the two separate ones? Cut out the support in the center for the bait bucket, and just make more dry storage." And he yep. said, "Absolutely, no problem." So this one turned out. Absolutely awesome. Um, full gasket all the way around and three mil underneath, like yep. you did, I guess, in the full boat. Yep. Yeah, and then we cut the whole thing out, and it was like a 12 by 6 oval, I think it was, something yeah. like that. So we cut the whole, whole thing out, but we needed it sealed, so then I, I cut three quarter inch HDPE surrounding it again, um, and then I put a gasket on top of it, so everything is completely sealed at that point. Yeah, absolutely. And then all new latches as well, seals down, no water is going to get in there. That will be true dry storage. Um, and the, the amount of storage that you opened up in this boat, it's you amazing. added so much storage to it mm -hmm. just from redoing the lids and the hatches and all the custom work that you did just turned out absolutely incredible. Blown away. Like, blown away. And we covered every single inch of this thing Yeah. <laughs> in, in aqua traction because this is, like we said, a 21-year-old boat. 
Um, it's seen just about everything, kicks, scratches, blood, hook, rash, I'm sure, um, and just covered it up. Beautiful aqua traction, charcoal over black. Favorite um, color. Favorite color, for sure. It looks super good. It, it's the mo it hides the most dirt, yep. you would say, out of all of it. Absolutely. And this stuff is incredibly stain resistant as it is. I mean, you guys have dumped printer ink and wrote in Sharpie on this stuff and it cleans off, but this color also cleans up the best yep. as well. Yeah, it hides, it hides a lot of that dirt. Mm -hmm. So like foot traffic, if you have a, a white color versus a gray color, the gray is going to hide it a lot better. Yeah. And even last when I had my black over driftwood, mm -hmm. like guys would get in the boat and they'd make their first step and there was just dust. You know, I never realized how much dust was just in the bottom of your shoe. And there's yeah. just footprints all over my beautiful boat. I'm just like, oh my God, why did I even clean this thing, right? Yeah. So with this, like it's going to hide it way better. I went with the same color in my new 219 as well, which we're probably going to show you guys after this video. I'm not sure when it's going to come out, but regardless, uh, this is very similar to the design I did for my new 219 and this thing just turned out absolutely insane. I had Nate move the seats as well, that was a minor detail, but I had them too tight to the steering wheel as well, as long as you are in there, you pulled the seats back, yep. put them in a good position so I could fit my belly in there, yep. basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, it, it turned out absolutely unreal. I'm, I'm blown away with it, man. The, the work this guy can do is insane. I'm blown away every time I come in the shop. You've always got a million things going on. There's five boats in here right now. Yep. And I think it's after six o'clock and it's just another normal day for Nate. Yep. Getting after it. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but we are going to go have some fun with this thing. Um, maybe it's in this boat. Maybe it's in the new 219 you just did. But regardless, Nate and I are going to go do some fishing this summer. Super stoked to, uh, to do that. Hopefully we can bring you guys along in that as well. But if you guys are interested in redoing a boat like this, bringing an older boat that you have back to life, adding aqua traction or any new custom lids. If you have a, one lid that's soft, if you've got a bunch of lids that are soft, and I've, I've said people to you that have a, a soft live well, a soft rod locker, yep. you can fix one specific piece of their boat. Correct. Um, or you can go all out like this and totally bring a new facelift to your, your boat itself. Nate is the man to do it, Clearwater, Minnesota. Custom, custom stuff here at Aftec. Absolutely love it. Super happy with it. Good. Glad super, you're happy. Super happy with it. So if you guys want to get a hold of Nate, I'll leave his contact information right here at the bottom of the screen and in the description below. Phone number is 320-249-8095. There you go. And email all that stuff, give you a call. You can talk to the man himself. He'll get you scheduled in. Don't wait to do this. Don't try and push it last minute. Give him a heads up. The guy's a busy man because he does such incredible work. So thank you again. Appreciate you Absolutely. so much. I'm so happy with how this thing turned out. And now we get to go show Jess. Yep. She's gonna love it. <laughs> Finally. <laughs>